Hello, all, and welcome to the zoo. Why am I here? <laughs> <laughs> Minions of the zoo is a lovable ragtag group of misfits that sprang up initially as a fan group to ranting monkey, scribe light, some dumb American, and the joint lords of the night livestream show. Late night discussions in Discord quickly evolved into streams of their own, with each member bringing something new and different to the table for discussion. Led by the incomparable Reject PPC and the One Ton Hammer, the group rotates hosts known as Zookeepers. Hello everybody and welcome to Minions of the Zoo. I am your host for this evening, One Ton Hammer. I will be your Zookeeper tonight, Reject. Alright, and welcome to the zoo. I am the Lucky Pop-Tart. Inquisitor? Skeptog. <laughs> I'm Prospero. Fat Platypus. Chaosy. And I'm Della Hazed. Regular streamers, they're known as minions. And special guests are known as traveling exhibits. They're on a nightly basis. So that each show has something unique and fresh for our audience. Minions of the Zoo currently streams at 10.30 Central Standard, 11.30 Eastern Standard Time. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Minions of the Zoo. I'm your host. Oh, I'm your host, <clears throat> Mr. Adam of Veggie Clan the First, and I'm subbing for Quiz on this wonderful Monday afternoon. And I am privileged to have with me the wonderful Terry Salt. How you doing, Terry? Pretty good. How about you? Ah, well, you know, uh, I'm not late. An, mm. ad an Adam arrives precisely when he means to. <laughs> oh, there you go. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. So it's... Oh, wait. And uh, to at least uh, coincide with the usual Mondays type of stuff. Um, <clears throat> it's Monday. It is. Yeah. For you, anyway. Well, oh, damn it, you fucking time traveler. <laughs> Yo, okay, listen. In these few episodes of the Minions show, uh, they need to be tagged as uh, as Adam chats with the time traveler type of thing. I think... <laughs> um, who, who's doing that? It's either... I think it's Hammer. Hammer or Harry? Yeah, yeah. One of them, too. Hey, Harry Hammer. Mark those down. Time traveler episodes. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay, so we got a, a bunch of stuff to talk about, uh, a lot of, a lot of stuff's coming out, uh, in both terms of, uh, news and, uh, video games, there's stuff I'm gonna, t obviously it's me, so we're gonna talk video games, um, I still got my Wii U, uh, Wii U, uh, hooked up to the uh, video cam, so uh, we're going to be continuing playing some Wii U games. Um, eventually, though, I'm going to switch over to the Wii, and I don't know if it's going to have the audio. Uh, hopefully it has the video. We'll see. It's going to be an experiment. Uh, let me see. Yeah, we're starting with Duck Hunt. Um, but yes! Okay, so uh, did did you wanna? <laughs> well, actually, the uh, as I'm reading the chat, Terry, uh, <laughs> I, I was originally gonna name the uh, the stream walk, "Come Watch Me Play with My Wii." But <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but I figured, uh, <laughs> um, I figured uh, this would, you know, a goofy. Goofy. The cheesy on one is a better choice. Yeah. 
So, have you seen the uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 cabinet? Yes, I saw, um, is it Maximilian Dude did a video on it. And, um, I mean, it looks cool, but I'm not paying 600 whatever dollars for it. That's that's way out of my price range. But, I mean, yeah, it is a cool thing. I'm glad it exists. It is pricey. Damn it. Um... I will say, though, that because I was watching Spawn Wave, I'm just going to let these go. Uh, <laughs> I was watching Spawn Wave, and uh, I think RGT talked about it as well, but they were talking about how the initial aspect of Arcade 1-Up was supposed to be like getting, getting arcade cabs, maybe smaller, yeah but at a cheaper price and i get that but at the same end when they're adding like when you're looking at this you're getting a shit ton of games plus online yeah, yeah, yeah. you know so it's and it's Marvel 2 is the like the flagship game because that's the one that's been kind of caught up in licensing hell for the last 20 years oh hell yeah but you do get like every versus game capcom's ever made on that thing oh well hold on hopefully hopefully the game my wii u switches over <laughs> switches over uh to the wii and i'll give you a proper versus game <laughs> mm. um but no but that's but but it's true yeah and, and not only that but i would i would assume that each of those games i think there's eight games on the cab uh like that, yeah. coming out um i would assume that each of those games have online mode that's yeah yeah they all have online that's worth it on its own holy shit um and yeah, especially I mean... when if they're building the cabs a little bit bigger because i saw some of the older ones um and they're just i don't know i don't know how i'm a small guy you know i'm, I'm not gonna lie mm. Ugh, i have to rhyme <laughs> stop it okay um Look, <laughs> I'm a Krillin type dude, right? But even I'm looking at these cabs, some of these older cabs, like the Simpsons or the uh, the the fucking Turtles, and I'm like, dude, I don't want to be right next to the to the person playing next to me. Like, that's gross. Yeah. <laughs> I need some space. I think um, if you're a collector, and this is an awesome uh, thing to have in your collection. But if you just want to play Marvel 2 or any of the Versus games, really, there's cheaper, less ethical ways to do it. Yes. Uh, you don't need to pay 670 odd dollars to play Marvel 2. If all you want to do is play Marvel 2 online, use Fightcade. <laughs> like... Well, that's the thing. That's the thing, too, is it's one of those, if you really interest because okay this cab is is pointed directly at a group of people who are just hey i, I got the 600 bucks to to burn here it is hmm. you know give me my rk because i mean it's even pre-order so god only knows when you're going to even get it um yeah. <laughs> so there's that but uh you know, if they want to spend the money, hey, go go spend the money. You're right. There is a lot more feasible ways to uh, to get yourself a MVC two cab. I mean, you know. Um, I mean, I would even say that Bitecade is going to be better, not just because it's cheaper, because it's also going to be where all the players are. You got to figure, not a lot of people are going to have the money to spring for the arcade cabinet, whereas anyone can download fightcade um if they want to well yeah so that's true most players are going to be on the free emulator service so if all you want is to play the game i don't think the cabinet is a good deal it's more if you collect these things if you oh want definitely to own a part of history i mean i'd get it just to have it not even yeah, thinking well, about any of the it. other yeah collecting it um but it is but hey, now I have a cabinet sitting there and it's connected online. Nobody's playing online with that cab. Yeah. Thank you. Know, like, it's like, um, damn. Yeah. 
Uh, oh, uh, uh, really quickly, since uh, we just started, so uh, we're only <clears throat> 15 minutes deep. I uh, want to welcome some of our chat guests. Here's Cannibalistic Wizard, W.R. Costin, and uh, Terry Dem. Oh, shit. Hey, Terry. Hi. Hey, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, yeah. That even brings up a, a further point. Yeah. Some of these people are going to have these cabs. Nobody's going to be playing it online. It is a nice, yeah, I mean, a nice idea. I mean, hopefully, it's it would eventually become open source and or not open source, but uh, open online. And uh, well, I think the problem is always going to be the licensing. Yeah. Like the guy uh, John D, he had to like do a lot of work just getting the licensing for the arcade cabinet. To get like an online release would be borderline impossible um the reason is that the arcade cabinet is legally classified as a toy and those are a lot easier to license than video games um so if you wanted like a steam or a playstation release that is a whole extra set of hoops that this guy is gonna have to jump through and i don't think he could pull it off i don't think mm. uh marvel would agree to it well i mean you've 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 played the game right Oh, many times, yeah. What What have you uh, played it on? Because, I mean, uh, obviously it was on arcade, clearly. Oh, uh, I, but then it was also no, on I, Dreamcast. I didn't, and... I didn't play it in the arcade. I think it was the X360 that I had it on. Did it come out on I the uh, Xbox No, it might arcade. have been a play... Um, um, yeah, it was, either, it was either the Xbox or a, a PlayStation i had it on it might have might have been the x360 i know well Um, i know it came out on the ps2 i think because i think that's what quiz was saying in uh that that's it (laughs) it must have been the playstation 2 that i had it on um and i was like really lucky because like i had like one copy and like but it was bundled with like three other games and when I said that, look, I, I really only want this one, it's like, oh, well, we can just sell you that one for, like, five bucks. It's like, Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> five bucks? Yeah, because it was um one of those licensing issues, again, where, like, I, I, I think they were only legally allowed to sell their remaining stock. So it was like, let's just mark it down to get rid of this thing. They, they just they weren't going to get any new stuff in and, like, they, I think they just assume like, who the fuck's going to buy it? That's why it was bundled with three other games. They're just trying to, you know, get merchandise out the door. Yeah. Pretty much just uh, try and make as much, try and push the product, get some some yeah. cash, just put the candy in. So yeah, I got it for like five bucks. And it was like, when I first played it, holy shit, this is the best game I've ever played. I played that thing so much. funny how bad the balance in that game is like yes you could never you could never release this as a game in 2022 if it wasn't called marvel vs. capcom 2 if a brand new game had that kind of balance it would just be locked out of the room oh well here's a question have you played did you play marvel vs. capcom 2 oh, wow, wow adam there you go uh before you played the first one Yes. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I, I, I played um, X-Men vs. Street Fighter. I played that one in the arcade. But then I didn't play any of the other versus games until MVC2, which I had on the PlayStation 2. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was the same. Uh, I played... No, no, no. It was X-Men Children of the Atom. Uh, yeah, and I played um, that. I, at a I, stand. I played that one in the arcades as well, but that wasn't a versus game, so I didn't think to mention it. Oh, right, right. That, um, that was just an X Men game. That was um, only Marvel. Well, I was just thinking of the same uh, same, same series, of, yeah, yeah. Uh, but with 
MVC one and two. I played two a lot at a bowling alley. Yeah. Big old Those screen. were great. Yeah, dude. It was... I I remember I actually picked bowling as my um school sport when I was in high school. And it was not because I liked bowling, it was because they had a Street Fighter <laughs> machine at the bowling alley. Oh. It was like <laughs> you you guys bowl, I'm gonna be busy for the next two hours. You know, uh I, I forgot that that there was the choice. Because uh, we had that too. Um there was like I think there was another one. Like bowling we had weightlifting and I think swimming or aquatics or something like that. Okay. I can't remember all the choices we had. I know rock climbing and oh, um shit. Well awesome. Go kart racing was another one that you Kart that was, racing? Uh, yeah, yeah. You had kart racing? Um, well it was kind of more like dodging cars, but like you raced them. You weren't like just driving to crash into people. You, it was a race, but they were like more like dodging cars in that if you hit something, no one was going to get hurt. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I think we had very. It's a no. I went. I went for bowling because, like I said, there's a Street Fighter machine here. I'm. I, I'm going to pick this every time. <laughs> well, I mean can't argue with that right yeah i i even made sure i had lots of uh coins in my pocket on, on sports day uh... yeah um yeah marvel vs capcom 2 is a great game until you figure it out because there's like four characters that are just so insanely good you basically have to use them <laughs> if you if you're playing competitively if you're playing competitively there's like four characters that are busted in terms of how strong they are and then there's a, like another six that are good if you use them as their assists it's like that's it that's the game <laughs> you got 56 characters maybe 10 are playable that's true um yeah but it's still so it's, it's one of those oh, it's still awesome yeah like, right it um it was i would say the same I thing didn't know, oh. i didn't know cable was like one of the god characters when i was playing it and i just liked him because i could just sit on the other side of the screen and just spray my laser at everyone and just kill everything and i was like oh this is my favorite character and then like years later it's like Oh, right. He's like one of the four best characters in the game. <laughs> That's why I liked him. All right, so uh, <laughs> Marvel versus Capcom. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get get that arcade cab eventually. I would say. Sure. Um, hey, I'd like to uh, make a quick shout out. Jeez, uh, do I have? Okay, so um, every now and then. I uh, run across some game developers uh, who are working on some homebrew games, and a lot of them look really great. And mm -hmm. um, this one I ran across just today um, is from a person named, or on Twitter, they're gone, at ClayZula. Okay. So, um, and just full discretion, if something comes out and this person has like some horrid tweets or something like that I'm like hey I'm, I don't endorse that but mm. what <laughs> but what looks like he or she or they them whatever they're uh, what, what they look like they're working on looks really nice uh, Rog and Roll Game 
uh, hashtag. Um, that's pixel art with 3D. Uh, it's like it, 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 it. It's like that 2.3D that uh, Squaresoft's doing with like triangle strategy and uh, okay. live alive or live a live, um, live alive. Uh, I love it. I I think this looks wonderful. As much as I like uh, pixel art, like uh, uh, Shovel Knight, um, I think yeah. stuff like this, where it it encap encapsulates uh, a three D perspective to it, I think I'd I'd like that too. You know, I think that that's a nice touch. So shout out to this guy. Um, there was another one, uh, an RTS, uh, but I'll have to bring it up another channel because I didn't prep it. Uh, damn it. Um, but yes. Um, before I go into that, uh, the next bit, uh, was there anything that you wanted to bring up? Uh, let's see. Um, I don't know how big of a Guilty Gear fan you are, but uh, announced Bridget is uh, the next DLC character, which I think was an excellent choice. I think he is a very popular character that, uh, uh, you know. Whoa, 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 Bridget. I, I heard I heard it on, uh, uh, or well, I saw it coming up on Twitter. Wait, for what game? Uh, Guilty Gear Strive. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I think they were saying that it was... It was a meme, so I don't know if how much. Well, okay, so in the previous Guilty Gear games, Bridget looks very feminine, um, but he's a man. He's like quite obviously a man. He doesn't like hide it. If you look at his actual close-up sprite, it's quite obviously a man. Um, and it was even a, a thing on TV tropes. Uh, dropped a Bridget on them which is like get someone to admit that they think Bridget is hot and then tell them that it's actually a guy <laughs> what this hold is on, an anime hold drawing hold on I saw the same thing with uh, there's a character in the new Pokemon game where uh, it's a guy but it looks like a I, 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 don't, I don't know I, like I said I, I'm just seeing the uh, responses to these things, and I'm sitting there like, wait, why? Mm. What is? But I don't know the Pokemon one, but uh, the Guilty Gear one. It's a guy. He he plays with a yo-yo. All his attacks are based on his yo-yo and his teddy bear. So he uses yeah. that for as his character, with along his character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all his, all his attacks are based on either his yo-yo or his teddy bear. Damn. Was this a uh, very very popular character? So I was like, that was an excellent choice for them to pick as the next DLC character. This was uh, released at Evo. Yeah. Well, yes, I believe that you can buy him now, um, and play as him. But yeah, the they dropped the uh, announcement at Evo. Nice. Hey, I'm all for new characters. Uh, yeah. Speaking of characters, did you see the new characters for Street F that was announced for uh, Street Fighter Six? Yes, uh, Kimberly and Jury. Um, mm. I think they both look really cool. Um, I think they did a very good job making Jury look psychotic, yeah. like she's meant to be. She's like a psychotic woman, but oh boy, did they capture it well! Whoa, I started feeling all these tingly bits downstairs, so let me say. Yeah, I mean, she's definitely designed to evoke those as well, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, if you, like, just see her gameplay, the psychosis comes through very well. Like, holy shit, I do not want to be alone in a room with this woman. Unless you're into that sort of thing. Oh, well. Uh, I, I mean, it is kind of 
because we saw the leak of the characters before so I mean, yeah um but it is nice it was nice to see their uh their fighting styles in this in this iteration and kimberly yeah. looks pretty cool i i can't wait to, to oh definitely yeah um, it reminds me of guy from street fighter alpha street fighter i don't know alpha? if you played the alpha series I, I i've only played uh what the third one with quiz a few okay. times um I never really got into it. Uh, I, I just know that Cody is in it, and he's from Final yeah. Fight. Oh, Cody and Guy were both from Final Fight, and Alpha, Street Fighter Alpha was where they started bringing the Final Fight characters into the Street Fighter canon. And, um, yeah, Guy is one of the, uh, the Alpha characters, and he's got a similar play style to Kimberly, though Kimberly's looks a lot cooler, I must say. Hmm. Well, I, well, yeah. Didn't they say that uh, Kimberly was uh, um, kind of like what Kabuki or the ninja style? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think I think she even has technically the same fighting style as Guy. I think um, Bushinryu is what it's called. Um, but no, the the fighting style is very reminiscent of Guy, but. Uh, Kimberly makes it look a lot cooler. Well, I like it. And you know what, Terry? I know you said you didn't like the, uh, what, the hip hop and R and B type of Street Fighter Three uh, type soundtrack. Yeah, not a fan. I, I think I think you're gonna I think you're gonna like some of the tunage from this game. I don't know. I have a feeling. I I don't think I'll like the music, but I do think I'll like the overall game. Um, I, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of like the spray paint aesthetic, either. Yeah, it's kind of. But weird. I mean, but they did the ink ink type uh, like Japanese uh, ink writing, uh, in I think five. I think um, that's a cosmetic thing or that four. like yeah. once you're actually focused on playing the game, you kind of tune that stuff out anyway. Yeah. So I don't think it's going to be a huge problem, except for like right at the beginning when I'm just learning the game once I'm like into the game I'll barely even notice the paint splashes all over the place yeah once you once you really get into it I don't think it it matters too much exactly um, and I do want to play around with the commentator packs I think that's like a that's a cool a novel idea. idea yeah that um, I'm probably going to turn them off after I've heard all the dialogue a few times <laughs> I, the first first few times I play, they're going to be on just to hear the, the commentary. It'd be cool, like, oh shit, yeah, and then like two, three matches in, you're like, oh okay, shut the fuck. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, it was the same with um, I think it was Dragon Ball Fighters. You had like this announcer, and it's like, oh, this is cool. Okay, I'm done with this guy now. How do I turn him off? <laughs> Uh, yeah, might might not have been Dragon Ball, but I think I think it was one of those Arxis games. I had like this hyperactive announcer. I was just like, no, I'm turning you off. <laughs> it's like it was it was fun for like five fights and then uh, shut up. <laughs> yeah, you've all right. <laughs> you've reached your limit. <laughs> oh jeez. You know what I think would be awesome though, if one of the people on the commentary in the game. Play Street Fighter Six with themselves as the commentator. Like you get, I don't know, James Chen, and he's just like playing Street Fighter Six while in game James Chen is commentating to him. I think that'd be pretty fun. That'd be meta. Yeah. I think that'd be distracting. Like if I heard my own voice coming from the game I was playing, that would put me off. <laughs> Um, I'm sure I've asked you this before, but what are you going to pick it up on? Is that sorry? Um, what are you going to pick uh, Street Fighter Six on? Oh, Steam. Um, I don't, I don't own any consoles anymore. Every game I buy is going to be on PC. Oh shit! You're PC master race. Yeah. I forgot. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. 
I do think there's going to be crossplay eventually, um, so that they're better. Do, um, P- PC why can the play fuck? PlayStation. Yeah, why in the fuck would they not have crossplay? That that baffles me. Well, I think it's again, it's got to do with um, rights and licensing and shit, like Steam and uh, Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo. They all have to agree to like the crossplay functionality, um, and like if one of them is like being difficult, then you know they they might decide it's not worth having crossplay on everything except PlayStation. It's like if Sony's the holdout, so they might they might not bother. But I think it's an excellent idea. I think um, every fighting game should have it just to maximize the. Uh, the player pool that people have access to. I mean, I'm only going to be playing single player, so it's not a huge factor for me. But, I mean, say you or Quiz want to match against me, cross play would be awesome to m- make that possible. Well, that's, that's one of those things where it's like, look, it, it, it's it's a fighting game. You're going to want it, the most people to play. Especially with looking at the recent news of a lot of games getting rollback. Um, yes. In terms of their network code. Um, and, shockingly, Switch isn't there. But I think I think that's mainly because Switch has the, its, its own weirdo, goofy fucking code that they do. Um, I don't know if you've heard of him, but there's a guy called Sajam. And he leads Rollbackia, which is like his quest to get Rollback netcode in every fighting game that he can. Like this is like his quest. He's fucking passionate about Rollback netcode and as many games as possible having it um, because it improves the the experience that much. Yeah. Uh no yeah I I gotta. Hey oh shit I have to send you an invite uh to the uh to the uh. Mr. Adams Arcade, everybody, in the uh, description, go ahead and click that link and uh, join the arcade. We play a lot of games out there. And you'd be having a fun time, too. You'd be able to match make. Oh. And... Um, it says invite invalid. I just clicked on it, and it says this invite may be expired, or you might not have permission to join. So, oh, uh... well, that's a goof on my part, because I'm dumb. <laughs> I probably put the wrong link in there. I'll have to fix that. Uh, no worries, but uh, yeah, I- I'll I'll adjust that. But either way, at the arcade, you know, we play a lot of games. There's a lot of uh, hardcore fighter people in there, um, and yeah, the rollback was was something significant to them. Uh, oh yeah, and and that's what I'm in terms of like crossplay. With these with this, these systems, I think it will. Cause cause that was, the big complaint coming out of it was oh shit these games are dead, especially with like Samurai Showdown, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, yeah. um it's like oh they're dead on the Switch it's like well no there's still people there's a lot of people playing them, um. But. What would not kill these games off on these systems, is cross-platform play if fall guys can do it oh hell yeah they can do it you know i oh, know having the ability for like cross pl- uh, platform matches would just help these games find their audiences so much uh more easily like because a lot of the problem with old especially older games is they're very hard to join like, if you're a new player to something like Third Strike, every online match you play is going to be against someone who's been playing <laughs> Third Strike since it came out, and you are going to get demolished, and it will not be fun. So if you can bring more people into the the game through, like, crossplay, then the chances that you'll match up with someone who's equal to your skill level that you can actually have a decent match against it goes way up if the more people you have access to yes 
And uh, I will say, uh, earlier today, I was, well, before the show, I was playing uh, Call of Duty on the Wii U. And uh, as of tonight, there was 13 people playing. And uh, yeah, like you said, these are the people who are hardcore. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're st- sticking to their guns <laughs> type of shit I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you an example um, I um, challenged Gunsky to a game of Blaze Blue um, Central Fiction Ooh. and then like this random player joined our lobby and is like we kind of like fine we'll play against you I guess and like he destroyed Gunsky in like no time at all and he even had the nerve to say you should at least try like, he was that dickish about it. Like, this was the first time he's ever played this game, Gunsky. And he gets paired up with someone who's been playing for, you know, 10 <laughs> years. Like, hold on, hold on. That's, uh, hold on. Hopefully my phone doesn't blow. I'm gonna plug it in. Please give me a charge. There we go. Um, that actually reminds me of a, a conversation I had with uh, my pal, uh, Kokonoe at the arcade um you know he was he was goading me for being very bad at blaze blue <laughs> you know like it's different if it's your friend no no no, a, no, 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 no 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 um but this is what i was telling him i was like yo you you got to remember that that you are part of of a grouping of people who are very good at this this game and you're dealing with casual people and how you deal uh-huh. with these casual people is everything uh whereas kokonoe will sit there and goof on you but he's he's rough but he's not you know he's not like that guy where he was like wow what the yeah. fuck are you doing it's like well no that you're not always dealing with people who are just that involved in the game and yeah. you know you want to be a bit more welcoming again this is where uh, uh gatekeeping i guess you could say is is a bit you know yeah you don't want mm. the goofy people who who just want to to be able to hit a button and do 100 hit combos but at the same end you don't want to discourage people who are trying to learn the game and get better at it because that's yeah. more players for you. That's 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 a benefit, in my view. Um, that's actually why I felt bad when like I played against Johnny, uh, Johnny Hellcat, um, and like our Marvel games, I won like seventeen out of eighteen. And I was like, okay, I mean, he doesn't seem to mind, but it would have been more fun if like the results were less lopsided, like. I would have preferred if it was a lot closer, but um, because what I did with Blaze Blue when I started like winning too much is I just picked characters that I wasn't good at. But Marvel Two, like even like bad character, I still know what I'm doing. I still know their basic moves, so it's just yeah. <clears throat> it was just a, a, a bit frustrating. Um, at least on my end, I don't know how he felt about it. That you know, matches were a bit lopsided that way. Yeah, and you gotta, you also gotta find the actual like if the person, because I was trying to tell him too is like, it's the dedication, like you're willing to put the time in, but also yeah. the interest. You have to be wanting, of course, to yeah. do that, and for a lot of it, you know you can't look at it as extreme like either you're all in or all out there's some people who are interested but they don't want to really want to you know sit there and devote all the time to just passively Hmm. playing it and uh i would i would even consider myself a casual yeah Um, no i'm i'm i'll say this um as as much as i like even now i'm playing games and i host it on the on the show uh, you know, I play on Saturdays and Fridays uh, at the arcade. Um, it's it's not so much that I'm looking to be a really great player 
or a really good player. This is I have fun playing the game and getting better at it. You know, it could be anything. It could be Galaga. You know, I could be sitting there playing Galaga for hours on end, and it's like, holy hmm. shit, I'm getting to levels that I didn't think I could get to. You know, that's it, that's just an enjoyment on my end, uh, and I wouldn't yeah. expect anybody. The thing anybody... is, if you if you genuinely enjoy it, and the chance that you'll want to make that time commitment go way up, like there's a reason that I put you know hundreds of hours into Guitar Hero. And that's Yo. because even when I was shit at it, I was still having fun. Um, whereas if your only experience with the game is you go online, you get your your ass handed to you and then laughed at, probably not going to want, you know, to come back and, and get better at it. You're going to think, yeah, I'll just play something else. Where yeah. people are not going to do that to me. But, I mean, you experienced... I, I would assume that you would experience these types of... Um people in a lot of communities you know if you go into a tabletop war gaming thing you know yeah. you'll 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 run oh, across the yeah. people who are like oh what the fuck i have this large of an army and you're coming in here trying to figure out how to roll a dice what the fuck you know it's it, it's everyone i don't like playing with strangers yes like, if you want me to play multiplayer it will almost only ever be me like, with or against friends um well, that's it. It's just, uh, that's, I don't want to play strangers. That's why I think it's all the better when you run across a, a couple of people, a group of people, some of people, um, who aren't like that and are willing to just, yeah, let's, you know, we're just playing games. You know, that's what you want to yeah. do. We can entertain ourselves with this, you know. Um, and they can be very good at their craft but they're not sitting there again i would look at it like like you know you're sitting there sitting against somebody who's like a chess master but they're willing to to play along with you they're not sitting there looking at it like oh my god why am i dealing with such scrubbery you know yeah. no, it's fucking... yeah, i mean there's certain people who are very good teachers like and then there's people who are just like they enjoy you know, destroying weak opposition because it makes them feel powerful. Like, I mean, you can do it. I mean, you have fun how you have fun, but I don't know. It seems a bit pathetic to get your enjoyment from, you know, picking on people that <laughs> you know can't fight back. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's uh, being an older brother, <laughs> but yeah. that was a lot of... Uh... You know, when he was younger, it was it was one of those things where it's like, yeah, you know, let him let him do his thing, you know, because you don't want to discourage, you don't want him to sit there and not want to play the game. You, yeah, you, exactly. You, you want to learn how to play the game, you know. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's some heavy stuff, man. I mean, if if you go back and watch the streams where I was playing against Johnny, I was, like, trying to be encouraging. Like, I didn't want to be like, ha ha, suck shit, I perfected you. Like, no, that, that's not going to be nice or, or, like, it's not going to make him want to play ever again. I was like, no, 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 you, like, you, you took down two of my characters. That's really good. And you're like, I wanted to sort of, like, you know, don't, don't get discouraged. You, even if I'm winning all the games, you're putting up more of a fight each time so you are getting better kind of thing so like i was trying to sort of like keep him sort of interested in the game so like pointing out his progress and and that because like like yeah if i could just be a dick and go why am i even wasting my time with you but like and i would never get to play with him again like what would that accomplish yeah well and just the idea of discouraging somebody from yeah. trying something new. But also, it's, you gotta, it's like, you also recognize that you're not trying to be, like, grand champion of whatever the fuck game no, you're playing. Really <laughs> it's not. like you're just enjoying the game. Um, wow, the chat has erupted into chaos. Oh, no. <laughs> 
There's a lot of new people. I like seeing new people. Uh, welcome, all you new people. <laughs> and I know you're new because you don't have a wrench. <laughs> <laughs> um, most, most people in the Minions chat get wrenches just it's automatically. Just... Just being, yeah. Hi, I farted. <laughs> There's a wrench. <laughs> <Have> a wrench. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um but welcome, uh chat. Uh we'll probably be on for another twenty minutes. I still wanna try I, I, I really do want to get one game in at the end of it. I was just trying to find a perfect uh intro to it, so since we've halted it here. Um Witness the probably the greatest game on the Nintendo Wii U. The Nintendo Wii U. Here it is. Wait. Uh, but Nintendo Land. What? You've never played Nintendo Land? Why? I don't let, think I have. Let me tell you. Um, actually. Uh, here's a little tidbit. Um, so I'm signed up with the uh, Nintendo, like, I don't know, membership, whatever. Uh, and they sent me uh, come try out the Wii U before it was released. Uh, so I drove out to Chicago with a, with a pal and we got to play a bunch of Wii U games. Um, I think it was like a couple of months before release. Um, oh, yeah, we we played a uh, wonderful one hundred and one, uh, Nintendo Land, um, Pikmin three, and there was another one. Um, mm. I can't remember, but it I, was. I only played the first Pikmin. It was okay. I never got super invested in it, but it was a fun game for what it was. Yeah, no, Pikmin's. Pikmin's pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just not my kind of thing, but I mean, I like, I enjoyed it, but I, I wasn't clamoring for a sequel. It was like, it's just, yeah, it was fun. Oh, you know what? That brings me to another topic to talk about. <laughs> hey, um, Terry, uh, you're okay with with going? About 20, 25 minutes longer, right? Yeah. Was that a yeah or was that a... Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> so, all right. So, first off, this is Donkey Kong Country uh, Crash Course. And uh, it's a goofy game. You're going to be seeing a whole different thing than what I'm going to be playing. Uh, because I'm going to be playing it on the gamepad. Um and I can't capture that. But in terms of, of uh, games. Shit, wait. What were you. Uh, you brought up a game recently, right? Uh, I was talking about Pikmin not really being my thing. Oh, right. Um. Okay, so I wanted to talk about... Uh, yeah, let me get the game pad. There we go. Um, okay, so recently... Well, I think today it was announced um, that... Uh, oh, shit. Wow, I lost. Um, that there's going to be a Nintendo Direct uh, talking about Splatoon 3. And um, there was concern um, by a content creator by the name of Arlo. Have you heard of Arlo? Oh, I used to watch him. I, I haven't watched him in a while, but yeah, I know who that is. Yeah, like, He's the puppet guy. Yeah, the blue puppet dude. Um, I guess he made a video on, uh, on his... Uh, and what he thinks is going to happen with uh, uh, Splatoon. And uh, I have to agree. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, the fucking phone. <laughs> um, 
And Splatoon is a good game. It's really fun. But after a while of playing it, unless you're really into the, the first person damn it. Uh first person aspect of it or the, the single player aspect, it kinda dries out really quickly. And Okay. Um so I kinda agree, you know, I, I would hope that there's Wow, okay. <laughs> um, I would hope that there's like at least more game modes or something to go along with uh with with oh shit. Damn it. Can't be beard. I think I'm lost. Oh. There, there. This game sucks. <laughs> All right. How's it going, Donkey? Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, uh, and then I saw our old pal, uh, um, RGT85, uh, comment on it and say, you know, well, it's going to be a Splatoon, so what are you expecting? And it's like, well, new content, you know, mm -hmm. something other than just new weapons and new gear, because that was the same kind of thing that, uh, uh, that people complained about with, damn it, with uh, Call of Duty, you know. Um, mm. you're getting the same thing, just upgraded your different weapons and shit. So what are we getting in this new Splatoon? I don't know. At least Team Deathmatch or uh, fucking capture the flag or some some. <laughs> But yeah, um, I don't know. I never played Splatoon, so I I don't know much about it. I, I know the basic idea is you've got to cover like the map in paint and like more paint than the other team. That's basically the end of it. That's all I know about it. Uh yeah, and a lot of uh, a lot of new players tend to focus on. Uh... Wait, I can just talk. <sighs> uh, it, it... Fuck this game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of new players tend to focus on just trying to, you know, kill off the other players. But no, you win the, the map. Yeah, yeah, you win the game by inking the map and inking everywhere. Uh, my initial strategy is always getting your base area covered up uh, so you have a good foundation. Um, and the rest is just either you're pushing straight in the center or you're covering areas. Like I said, Splatoon is a fun game, but you know you you play it a couple of matches. I don't know. There's there's people who will sit there and play Call of Duty for hours on end. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. There's there's people. And I, who I, I've, this. I've never actually played Call of Duty, if you can believe it. Um, Get out of here. I I don't know. I don't like military themed first person shooters. For whatever reason, they just don't do anything for me. So I, I never tried it. It just never seemed interesting to me. Hmm. You know, I don't like these people telling me to take breaks. <laughs> no, that is annoying. I, I don't know that I've enjoyed many first-person shooters come to think of it. Like, I, I did enjoy GoldenEye back on the 64. Whoa! Are you serious? Um, yeah, no, GoldenEye was good. I enjoyed that. Um, I'm trying to think what else I've played as a first-person shooter. I I kind of played a little bit of Bioshock. That was, that was okay. But yeah, it's just not really my kind of thing. Holy! Whoa! 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 How long has Eeyore been in the fucking chat? I don't know. I said hi to him when he joined, but I thought you were talking to him in chat. 
Eeyore, why aren't you saying anything? I was waiting for an opportunity an to opportunity? start interrupting what you. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, shit. I should have my head. And how are you today, Adam? Um, I'm doing all right, Eeyore. How, how are mm. you? Doing perfectly well. That's good to hear. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. So let me. I'm gonna try it and we'll play some more Nintendo Land another day. Um, let me try and switch over to the Wii because I do want to play at least one game before I end the night. I have to. I'm gonna suck at it. Let's just be real be horrible at it um but hey eeyore thanks for joining me sir that's very kind of you now i got an aussie and a canuck <laughs> i think you're trying to steal hammer's format <laughs> that's true well thing is the term canuck might not be an entirely proper or complete description A Canuck that's trying to become an American and plan a trip to Aussie land. Mm -hmm. So, what do you want to come down to Australia for? Yeah. Uh, mostly scuba related stuff, actually. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it's one of the, the things that Australia is uh, known for is you know, beaches and that sort of thing so mm -hmm. i uh i i've never scubaed um <laughs> I, I i don't like beaches all that much i i i really hate sand and yeah, it gets everywhere Why? when you because it's coarse <laughs> and rough it gets everywhere all right anakin <laughs> yes basically <laughs> You would. Yeah. All right. You know I would. Two it's games. It's a good... Eeyore. Did you yes. have uh, something you wanted to uh, chat about? No, I just showed up to hang out. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um. All right, yeah. Uh, nine oh one. All right, so yeah, let's do another ten, fifteen minutes. Um, we'll do. Yeah, we'll do a couple of battles of uh, Chrono Trigger, just to do some grinding. And then... Talix is Mega Man. Go. The what? Talik in chat says Mega Man. Go. And then just play Mega Man. Oh. <laughs> Yo, yeah. Well, I could do... Um... Alright, so Doc Punch-Out is a, is a Wii Rare game that I think it was a limited release. And this one too, Ultra Hand. Uh... For me, Mega Man's always been a better concept than an actual game. Like, I love the idea of uh, you kill them and you get their power, but the games are just too old, and like, they, I, don't, I don't think they hold up as well as uh, the nostalgia would have a lot of people believe. Yeah. I think 20XX was a really good take on the Mega Man formula. But uh, Goldeneye. Yeah, I played that back in the nineties. What about you, Yor? Did you play Goldeneye? Uh 
No? I guess not. Um, uh, I played it multiplayer a few times. Okay. I am. Um, yeah, that was one of the few few games I played multiplayer because I was still at school, so it's sort of like friends coming over to play uh, GoldenEye together. I, I was pretty bad at it. Maybe that's why I, I never liked first person shooters. I'm just bad at them. But um, it is it is fun. It's like running around shooting each other and uh, yelling at whoever chooses odd job. Yeah, I can see that. Whoa. Chat's interrupting a lot, too. Or interrupting. Uh, erupting, I should say. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Frosty Glass. Um, you know, the, the sad thing is, you know, Eeyore just comes along and just fills up the chat. You know, talk so much, you barely keep quiet. The um, Super Mario RPG that you're playing, e? that's one of the games that I really wanted to like, but I think I played it too late. If I played it at the time, I probably would have loved it, but I played it as an adult and as like, I played too many other games that were better, and like it was just <laughs> hard to go back to uh, like a Super Nintendo game. I'm not gonna lie. When this when this game came out, um, I brought it to school. <laughs> I brought it to yeah. school just to to look at the book, and uh, and just be like, oh, I can't wait till I get home and start playing some Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> this is exactly what. It's... <laughs> It's, um, I, I, I think Super Nintendo was like a great system and there's a lot of great games on it but I mean I would rather play something like Chrono Trigger than something like um, Mario RPG like 10 times out of 10 I think um, Chrono Trigger is just like leagues ahead of everything else that was uh, on Super Nintendo in terms of role playing stuff Oh, yo, yeah. Um, oh, nice. Uh, well, hold on. Let's let's see where I'm at in Chrono Trigger. Uh, well, hopefully I can get out of this without... Yo, so... While everybody was on PS3 360... Um, I was pretty much full on, uh, the Wii system. Um, mm. so a lot of my, like, my name is Adam Wii, uh, from, from like, uh, the family guy with, <laughs> with Adam West. Nobody misses oh, okay. Adam Wii. <laughs> 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 um, but, uh, even I, when I... I was living out in Washington, right? Um, Olympia, to be specific. And I was working at a, at a place called Game Crazy. And it was uh, like a game shop that was part of Hollywood Video. I mean, of course, I'm talking okay. to both an Aussie and, and a Canadian. And <laughs> probably don't have Hollywood Video out by you. Um, but it's a video rental place and then they had a shop on the side that uh, would sell used games you know they'd buy used games and sell them um, cool. and so I'd work there and and my name on my name tag was Adam Wee because I was the only fucking person there that would deal with the Wee people everyone else was right yeah <laughs> I, I, I did own a Wee um I never got a Wii U, um, but my dad bought me the Wii. Like he was like, "Do you want one?" And like, "Not really." He's like, "Okay." And then like the next day, like I bought you one anyway. He's like, "All right, thanks." 
and like there were some good games for it, but I was just I don't think um there was much on it that I really cared about because it put too much focus on like the uh motion controls and I hate motion controls. You hate mushroom controls? Motion. Oh like motion. The... Oh right, right, right. I don't know, they work somewhere, you know. Like, um what what was the Smash Brothers? That was Brawl that was on the Wii, wasn't it? Brawl? Smash Brothers Brawl. I think that was the one that was on the Wii. Yeah. Um that was a good game. I did I I know it gets a lot of shit and I don't think it was as good as Melee, but Brawl was fun. I had I enjoyed that. Um I'm trying, like, I can't think of a lot of Wii games that I really got into. into. It was pretty much just Brawl and um, Super Mario Galaxy. I think that was it. That was pretty Galaxy much. was pretty good. Yeah, Galaxy was great. And um, I had a Switch, but it died. And I never bothered replacing it. <laughs> Um, the only games I had for the Switch that I cared about were, again, Mario and Smash Brothers. That's it. Um, I had uh, Mario Odyssey and um, uh, Smash Brothers Ultimate. And like uh, I had other games, but I didn't get in- invested in them the way I got invested in those two. No, I... I mean, I, I picked up the Wii when it came out, <clears throat> and uh, a lot of the old games that I that I play are pretty much on the virtual console. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I have emulators for that stuff, so there's, there's not a lot of value in me buying, say, Donkey Kong Country 2 on the Wii virtual console, like... I, I can play it on the Super Nintendo emulator for free. Oh, don't get uh, me wrong. Once once I got the Wii, the Wii U, and I switched over huh. all my stuff to the Wii U, um, yeah, the uh, my original Wii pretty much became a yo-ho-ho type of system. <laughs> well, like, my problem with the Nintendo consoles is the only reason to buy them is the first-party games. Yeah. Like... They've got a whole bunch of other games on them, but I can just buy them on Steam. I don't need to buy a Switch to play, you know, whatever indie game they've ported over to the Switch. Um, so I'd only be buying a Nintendo console for the first-party Nintendo games. And I don't know, apart from Smash Brothers and, like, Odyssey, which I finished, so I wouldn't replay I, I didn't really get a lot of value out of my Switch. Um, oh, Wikipedia Snippet is mentioning Breath of the Wild. I never played it. It didn't look like my kind of game. It doesn't look like a Zelda game at all to me. So, uh, I, I think Zelda was best in um, like, uh, Link, Link to the Past on the Super Nintendo was like great. And, so you're and not I, a, I enjoyed, you're not I enjoyed a, Majora's Mask. That was the other other good one that I liked for Zelda. What? I just, did you just say you you like Link to the Past? Oh shit! Yeah, Link to the Past and Majora's Mask. And Maj- I mean, Ocarina, Ocarina of Time is good, but. I liked Majora's Mask a lot more. Oof. I'm not a big fan of Majora's Mask. Uh... Well, I mean, I like that because you basically only have the three days, the NPCs have actual lives. Like, they don't just stand in one spot repeating the same dialogue. If you talk to the postman on day one, He'll do, say different things and do different things in, on day two and day three. Whereas in Ocarina of Time, because it's such like a grand scale, an NPC is just going to stand there and repeat the same dialogue every time you talk to them. 
And I thought it was quite cool that it felt like NPC had lives of their own, that you weren't the sole acting force in this in this world. Yes. I don't know. I, I just didn't like the time aspect of it. Um, but I've also been told that I'm very picky in terms of my eating and, uh, I guess, gaming habits. So, um, I, I think one look at my Steam profile will suggest I am not picky when it comes to games. <laughs> I'll play anything. I mean, if I see a game for like a dollar, like sure, I'll play it, see what it's like. If it's shit, who cares? All right, we're gonna save there was a this. That decided, there was a website that uh, calculated how much your Steam library was worth. I, I should try and find that, see if I can remember what it was. It'd be interesting to see what mine is up to. All right, we got 15. We're at 9.15. So I think I'm going to play at least two rounds in this game that I wanted to play. And then we'll call it an evening. How's that sound to you? It sounds good. What about you, Eeyore? What's up? <laughs> How's it sound that I'm uh I'm gonna play one of my favoritists of games, and I meant that favoritists is all the assists. I hope you enjoy it. I well, me too. I'm gonna mute myself and uh, put a little image here. Uh, hey Terry, would you mind? Yeah. Uh, uh, entertaining the uh, the chat and our good friend Eeyore there for uh, 20 seconds. See if you can. Sure. I am juggling right now. It's a shame you can't see it. It's really quite a spe spectacle to behold. You just have to trust me. How long's it been? Yeah, that sounds really convincing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Expert juggler, that's me. I did calculate my Steam um, account. It says between $8,427 and $32,146, which is quite a broad range. <laughs> Somewhere between $8,500 and $32,000 uh, that my account is worth. Uh, and what does Valve have to say about mercantiling one's account? Um, I believe they're not transferable, so I don't think I could do anything. Oh, so if Valve catches wind of you pulling that shit, they'll just... Nope. If, if, I, if I tried to sell my account for $8,000, then um, they would just... In it, yeah, they bend the account. Like this, this is just a calculator. It just says all, all the games in your account. What are they worth? And so apparently, uh, eighty four hundred. Um, I think it's if you if I paid the lowest price for every single game, it'd be eighty four hundred. And if I paid today's prices for every single game, it'd be thirty two thousand. So. Uh, somewhere in between is what I've actually paid. Thing is, I prefer physical copies in all instances. It's so whenever the service or services go down, I have the disk. I can find the hardware that's compatible with it. I can put all that together. That's true, <laughs> but a lot of games are requiring a game to check in with the server anyway so like 
Uh, one of the problems... DRM can go kiss my ass. That's why I'm never buying an Xbox. Right. But, um, one of the problems that Capcom ran into with Street Fighter Cross Tekken is they built that game specifically for uh, games for Windows Live, which doesn't exist anymore. But if you buy Street Fighter Cross Tekken on Steam, you can't play it because it tries to check in with a service that does not exist anymore. So you have to find like the community pack to to work around it. Um, <laughs> that that that's like even if you have a physical copy of Street Fighter Cross Tekken, you it'll try and connect to games for Windows Live and fail, and you own a you own an expensive coaster. Whereas you know I own an equally expensive line of code in Steam's database. That's not. I mean. <clears throat> You know, here's actually what what I'm going to be popping on in a second as a uh, tantamount, I guess you could say, to, uh, to what you're arguing. I, I would assume you're arguing about uh, uh, having physical copies yes. and then having copies that may or may not disappear based on lines of code. Right. Yeah. And, I, like, I get the, the preference for physical copies because like, most of the time what you're saying is correct you will have access to that game no matter what i'm just saying that modern practices between drm entirely... and software bullshittery there are exceptions i know this no, that that's my only point is like when i tried to play street fighter cross tech and it was like uh you can't connect to the server i was like well I can't play the game then. <clears throat> but luckily, like, there's a community patch, and so I had to dick around getting that set up and working, but, I mean... And they get that if you just, like, If I just bought the game <clears throat> and, like, tried to play it, it wouldn't work. Um, before... Now, you bringing up community patches is actually another side of this entire argument that's actually quite interesting. Would that probably light into the whole... Yo ho ho stuff. Um, real quick, Eeyore, I'll let you you finish. This isn't yo ho ho. No, no, no. But the uh, because we're looking at a time time barrier here, and I want to get my what I want to do. Um, before we I started in this game, um, I did want to point out that uh, apparently there's a two player mode in Punch Out. And you can access it without yoho hoing it. Um, Go Nintendo has posted an article, and people found out that you can get a second player to uh, control the different fighters. So I'm gonna. I, I knew it had a. I knew it had a two-player mode. I thought you both controlled uh, Little Mac. I didn't know there was a way for a second player to control like. The single player bosses. Yeah, no, yeah, it, it's uh, the video that they showed looks weird. <clears throat> um, but hey, uh, I think this weekend I'll probably try it out. And if anybody would like to uh, play some two player one on one super punch out, <laughs> let me know. We'll play. Um, I, mean, I would, but I don't think I have a system that would uh, allow me to do so. <laughs> Yeah, you don't have a switch. You're, you're oh. fucking PC gamer god, bro, broski <laughs> over there. <laughs> uh, but yo, I'm gonna pop on this game. This game is uh, one of my favorites uh, on the Wii, and it it only came out on the Wii in an arcade. Um, the arcade had a different character in it the Wii had uh, multiple characters um, but it is a versus title and son of a bitch I'm gonna hopefully try and hack it into a stand-up cabinet because I would love to play it uh, let me see can I get the timing right and damn 2010 2005 it came out 2010 came out in the US here we go 
My favorite fighting game. Um, what were you saying here about the uh, community patches? Is there? The thing that I really love, and this is connected to community patches, is the fact that, and I'm using Linux OS because I actually think there's this version of Linux OS specifically for this, you can turn modern computers literally into shells for software emulators for pretty much any console. Yes, you can. From there, it's rip a ROM onto a DVD or a Blu-ray disc, pop it in the slot, and there you go. Yeah, um, Discs there's definitely systems. ways to get around these things. Yeah. Um, and that's actually why I like the PC is that it's, uh, it's clearly like by far the most versatile gaming system. Is like it, it can be a PlayStation or a Nintendo or an Xbox or whatever you want it to be. If you're With enough to... space, it can be a Nintendo 64, a PS2, and an Xbox all at once. Exactly. Um, and no, I, I, I'm a fan of emulation. Um, I think Null DC Bear is like the greatest piece of software that isn't called Steam I've ever, I've ever possessed. Um, it's like an emulator for damn near every system up to like Dreamcast, I want to say. Um, everything from like the Atari twenty six hundred through to the Dreamcast. If it's in in that range, it's, it's emulated, and uh, it's got like downloadable games. Like you don't have to go to a separate website. You can just go to the DLC tab of the emulator and just like search for whatever game you want to download. It's like amazing. It's incredible. Uh, incredible multi-emulator well it's also uh i would say imperative to maintaining uh the the games i just i'm, I'm playing on the wii u right now and it's mm -hmm. been a chore downloading games to rebuild because my hard i had a hard drive external hard drive for the system and it crapped out on me, so I have to re-download a whole bunch of the games uh, for the Wii U. Uh, luckily, the Wii games were all on an SD card, and they survived. <laughs> but the hard drive crapped out, so I had to uh, uh, I'll let everything again. down yeah down re-download them uh, before the servers die out, and um, it's constantly like just downloading duck hunt it took a day or two because it would Jeez. it would just download and then stop i don't know i mean i don't know if it's you know my wi-fi connection or the server whatever but it's yeah um physical copies for sure uh if you can get it and if you get digital uh i would definitely back up double save Put some jars in the Dead Sea and uh, mm -hmm. save that shit because no, you I, um, never know. <laughs> you never know. I I don't think there's a realistic way for me to download my, into, my entire Steam catalog. Um, it would just take too much space. Um, it would just not be worth it. Like, most of the games, like... I'm not going to be terribly fussed if I lose access to uh, Callie's Caves 3. I don't even know what that is. I, I just pick the random game from my Steam library, and like, if I never get to play that, I'm sure I'll be fine. Uh, but are you, aren't you one of those people who, uh, who will purchase a game just because it's on sale? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll buy a game just because it's in a bundle with something else that I want. Oh, there you go. Um, and I actually put a thing on Twitter about that saying, like, there was a game I wanted and it was like 40 bucks on Steam, or I could buy a bundle of 10 games for $15. You know what? I'll take the nine extra games. <laughs> it's like, fine, I don't mind. <laughs> and, and get a, like a massive discount in the process.
I forgot the controls. Oh no. Uh, keep in mind, I'm playing with uh, a Super Nintendo controller um, that would, oh, okay. would have come with uh, the SNES Mini. Uh, right. You can plug the controllers from that and the NES Mini into the Wii Remote and use them for the system. Um, I couldn't find my Pro where the Wii controller for, for this, so... Um, things are kind of askew on this. It feels weird. This is a game I never really got into because I don't know any of the characters that aren't the Capcom, aren't the Capcom side. Like I don't even know what a Tatsunoko is, much less who these who, who the characters are. So it's like, oh, I love it. Like for the people who like it, I'm sure it's great, but it was just never something I I liked. It's like uh, if. It's like Fletcher Brothers, Fletcher Studios versus Capcom. <laughs> oh, okay. No, okay, no, no, well, maybe because Fletcher Studios, they, they were uh, a stalwart in terms of animation, much like Tatsunoko. But Tatsunoko, I mean, uh, Gacha Man, uh, Tekka Man, uh, Yatter Man, a lot of mans. Um, I think you're just making random sounds and then putting man at the end of it. No, <laughs> no. His his name is Yatterman. Uh, it's it's a uh, him and I think uh, female him. Uh, they go solve crimes. Um, I like this guy Hurricane Palomar. Uh, he's like a Batman. He's a detective who has a helmet that turns him into Hurricane Palomar. Um, okay. And he does his kung fu, and he can do this. Oh damn it! <laughs> Fuck you, Yada man. Your giant dog. Oh, I, I definitely prefer the Marvel characters. At least I know who they are. There we go. He turns into fucking ships and shit. Put it, Kate. And that looks like beautiful Joe. That, that that red guy looks a bit like Beautiful Joe if I'm just like glancing at the screen. Uh, I think Beautiful Joe is in this game. <laughs> um, um, I know he I know he was in one of the versus games. It might be this one. But um, no, I think like obviously the d the dimensions are different, but yeah. like just glancing at the basic color scheme, it's like oh. And like this guy Joe Condor, he's from uh. Uh, it had like two different names. It was Getchaman and Planet Battle of the Planets or something like that. Planet G or something like that. And then there's Mega Man Volma from I think Mega Man 64, right? Okay. Uh, um. Yeah, this is the Outer Man stage. They have their goofy robot people. Is it this one that had the dog from the Okami? Is the the RPG that he was from? Uh, no, I think that was uh, Marvelous Capcom two or four. Uh, he wasn't in two. I can guarantee that. Yeah, definitely not. Um, two. It was either three or infinite. I don't know. It's, um, I did. I, I don't know why. I just like the idea of playing as a dog. It kind of made me laugh. And um, I think it might have been three. You could play as, I think his name was Modok. He was like this giant head. Oh, <laughs> shit. Hey, there's another topic. Um, have either of you seen the new Modok for MCU? No. Oh. He's a robot. Oh, I don't know if that's my end or yours, <laughs> but I'm getting a lot of buffering. Um, no, yeah, they... They showed like a leaked image of him, and uh, he looks pretty much just like a robot. Okay. Um, I I don't know anything about the character besides there's like this floating head, which is hilarious. Yeah, he was and, just um, like a big head with little fig uh, arms and shit, and legs. Yeah. It was just like funny to look at him. It was just hilarious, and he's like. 
flying around. <laughs> it's like being a pain in the ass. Something like mental organism designed only for killing, or so something like something along those lines. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know how good he was as an actual fighter, but he was just fun, fun to look at. He was very, very comical. Hmm. Hey, you know, actually. Oh no. Okay, yeah, it's it's pushing that time. <clears throat> bop, bop. Oh shit, Mega Man's still alive. Mm. Damn. All right, let me go through the. Uh, roster real quick uh and yeah. then we are at 35 past the hour so i think we're mm -hmm. gonna we'll go ahead and we'll close it off no worries but yes this game tatsunoko versus capcom i love this game fucking all-time top tier game uh ken the eagle mm -hmm. jun swan Kassern, it's like a Mega Man. Uh, Tekka Man, Palomar, Yada Man. Uh, he's the villain for Yada Man. Uh, Gold Light Tan. Uh, Frank West from Dead Rising. Remember that? Beautiful Joe. There you go. There he is. Uh, Saki. I think it's a side scrolling shooter. Uh, Roll. Uh, Unimashu. Oh, God, Roll. Yeah. Uh, Volna. I think she's actually good in this one, though, isn't she? Yeah. And then, uh, you know, Rival Schools. It's good to see Rival Schools representation. You know, uh, and then, of course... That's, a, that's a series yeah. I never played. Like, I've heard people rave about Rival Schools, but I've, I've never actually sat down and played it. No. I thought you it was know, good. Um, that, um, I know Akira from Street Fighter Five. He was a rival schools character. That that's basically. Oh, and I know Sakura from Street Fighter was a guest character in Rival Schools. That's it. That, that's the entirety of my rival schools knowledge. I can't. I, you know, I I honestly I mix up uh, rival schools and uh, fighting vipers, uh, which okay. was a Sega game. I don't think game. I've played either. Now that, now, that, now that I think about it, I don't think I played either of them. So, yeah. Did you get the uh, Capcom fighting game collection with like six different versions of Darkstalkers? <laughs> I kind of want to get it only for uh, what's it called? Mars or Red Mars or Red Moon? Oh, uh, Red Earth. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, Red Earth. Because that looks, that looks pretty interesting. And the uh, robot fighting game. Robots, uh, yeah. But Darkstalkers, I've never really been too interested in. Darkstalkers is awesome. I've played basically all of them on one emulator or another. Um, but, yeah. Uh, it, it's a hard sell to buy a collection where six of the ten, no, five of the ten games are Darkstalkers. And the other five yeah. <laughs> are just like random fighting games that people have forgotten. Or didn't even know about. Yeah. Um, so, they do have. Uh, like puzzle fighter which isn't oh, even a yeah. fighting game it's, it's a puzzle game it's just that they've got street fighter characters like pictures of them fighting while you play the puzzle game it's like why is this in the collection wow and, um... okay uh <laughs> yeah i'm gonna fucking call it there <laughs> get my ass Hand it to me. I don't want to have to <laughs> end on a sour note. Um, all right, so it is it is time. It is calling curtain time. Uh, we have reached the end of the show. Um, once again, I was subbing for Quizzy. Um, don't know when he's going to be hosting again, but uh, 
perhaps I might be doing this again next Monday. Not that there's a problem because...